Hey everybody! I came in this morning to the to the shop. Had to I did a little did a little, little repair for the for the principal for uh, something they needed on some equipment, and noticed inside the TIG drawer that there was a pen cartridge in there. So I imagine the TCAT instructor at night, uh, Randall probably had something out. Got a you know got an urge to give it a try. So I did stick it in there. Checked it out. The one that he had did. So what I did is I grabbed a, a random handful of ballpoint pens out of the cup in my office. And I'm gonna see how many of those we could actually just use for practicing TIG welding. So we don't have to get anything special. All we need is a, is a TIG torch. I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down. I don't have a cameraman here with me or a tripod set up or nothing like that. But I'm gonna to try to get it set up where you can kind of see what I'm going through. All right, so here's my regular old water-cooled TIG rig. Don't need a water-cooled, any TIG rig of course would work. So <clears throat> here's a 330 seconds collet body or collet, and here's a 1.8, and I've got collet bodies for them. We're going to go ahead and take this big pin. This is a regular old blue, blue big pin. So here's the 1.8 collet. Look at that. Okay, if I want to kind of give it a test run, maybe I guess to see if it'll work, I can go ahead and use the collet body, slide it through there. Put a little pressure on the collet back in the collet body like that and it holds it okay so there's one that I could set up whoops so that's one pen that works we're gonna take this uh, paper mate ink joy one millimeter pen I like them fat ones this one looks a little bit smaller got the spring on the end of it may not work good I don't want the spring well actually Looks like it works fine also. Okay, let me just try it with the collet body on it. Of course, now it may be a problem because it's all flattened out right here. Of course, maybe that'd be a good way to make sure you get it stuck in the same distance every time. We'll just have to see how it looks in a torch. We'll go ahead and put it in the torch and see what happens. Now, obviously, this is not going to be welding, but, you know, with with... With welding, you're, you're building manual dexterity skills. You're making a connection between the end of the electrode, no matter what the process is, and your brain. You're getting those two things to work together. Okay, so whatever I can do to make my brain get in tune with that helps me out. So I've got this pin in here now. I can take this TIG torch, put it in my hand, and I can follow these lines on the paper if I've not had a whole lot of welding practice, okay, if I'm new to TIG. Okay, now, a lot of folks disagree, but in my opinion, this is the easiest process to weld with. You know, us pipe welders and, you know, aerospace folks, maybe we don't want to let that out, but it doesn't get any easier like than this. This is the same manual dexterity skill that you have been using in school for years. Here's my pen, rest the fat part of my hand here, and I draw a line. Here's my TIG rig, hold it almost the same. Rest the fat part of my hand there and draw a line. Now, now that one just slipped in there a little bit. Let's see if I can tighten up on it some more. And it may be one of those things you may need to put a little bit of tape right around the end of the, the body of the, the pen cartridge. So here I am here. Like I said, it's the same muscle memory as writing. Okay, I can write my name with this. So I'm building that connection right there. Now the thing that I don't do when I'm writing with a pencil is I don't hold my pencil way out here like this. I don't rest my pencil like this, but sometimes when we're welding, we have to do that. Okay, I'll, I'll pinky rest, okay, and I get from point A to point B. Or I may have to go around a corner or something and maintain a travel angle, but that's still doable. Okay, I can take the torch, put it in my hand like this, and get used to doing that without ever striking an arc. I don't even have to mark on it. Okay, you don't even have to have a pen, <clears throat> but this is just a way where you can kind of work on getting control of following that one straight line. Watch your work angle, watch your travel angle, and your, your arc length is going to maintain the same because you're actually touching the paper. So you would have to actually get a feel for it. <clears throat> Another thing that you could do is even with a regular piece of tungsten. And, and this, is, this is an example. I could take a piece of wire regular torch without a pen and just practice moving that along the table okay and then every time I touch it I make a mark 
I know that I got my arc too close. Like this, I'm good. Get over the top of it, I know I got it too long. So that's another thing you can do practice-wise. You could practice walking the cup with it. <laughs> this one is, is plastic on the barrel or in the, the, the ink cartridge, so it's going to wobble a little bit. Ain't no big deal. I can still take it, set it up here on the table, go to town. Okay, even if it's not making any marks for me, that's okay. All right, so this can be done with a regular, uh, any TIG torch that takes a collet and collet body. So right now, two for two as far as ones that would work. This one is the one that was already in the, the machine from the nighttime instructor. So I'm going to tell you, this is one of my favorite pins, though, by the way. It's a 1.6 millimeter F301, big, heavy, fat line. I like it. Not that that really has anything to do with welding, but, you know, sometimes I just can't help myself. Now, this one looks way different. So this one may be a problem. It's got a big barrel on the, or a big tube over here and a smaller one right here. But then again, that may, may work out good for us. I can find my collet. Now, that's going to be too short for us, so I'd have to modify a collet or possibly go to a 5 30 seconds collet. May fit that. I'd have to put a put a little measurement on it. So this one here, even though it's my favorite pen, it kind of stinks for any welding operations or simulated welding operations. This is kind of good. Maybe I didn't want it. That big old round end, that's kind of like what my tungsten looks like anyway once I get done welding. Except that I have a bunch of stuff hung up on it. Those that can't teach. Those that really can't, we're inspectors. So that's two out of two out of three so far. Let's take this one apart. This is a a Uniball Signo. Oh, that ain't gonna work at all. That's pretty fancy right there. It looks like it's even got some glue over the end of it or something in there. Maybe that's so you can't put some more ink in it, maybe. So old Uniball ain't no help. Hey, but this one might be big enough and rigid enough though. I can put it in a stinger, put it in an electrode holder for stick welding and do the same stuff, all right? Again, you're not trying to actually weld, you're trying to build that muscle memory that's needed for welding. So just like when you learn how to throw a baseball, uh, you didn't go out there and start having somebody pitch it to you, all right? You, you went out there and got started with a little bit of, you know, putting it in your hand, getting to feel what it was like, that kind of stuff. You didn't actually go out there full-fledged and start flinging the baseball at anybody or you didn't start hitting it with somebody pitching it to you, you put that baseball bat in your hand and you swung that baseball bat, you got a connection between the end of the baseball bat and your mind, okay? And that's what we're doing with, with building some welding skills. So there's some things you can do at home for sure doing that. You know, you could even get to the point where, uh, you know, you could just practice doing this, just holding your hands like this. So this is a pretty good relationship of uh, an electrode when I put it in a, an SMAW electrode holder. I could just practice doing that getting propped up. See how my elbow's rested? I get from point A to point B nice and comfortable. So there's things that you can do to work on keeping your skills kind of sharp or developing them even. Okay, so we're going to try one more pen here. This is the this is the Tennessee Reconnect pen from TennesseeReconnect.gov. That's so old people like me can go back to school and somebody else got to pay for it. So this one here has also got the flat spot on it. I'm going to call it. All my mess I got flung all around. There's my call it body. Here's my call it. Slip it on there. That looks pretty, pretty dandy. Okay. There's my call it body. Let's see where it's going to fall on the torch. Oops. You know what I'm thinking. Doop, doop, doop. So that's as far as we'll go forward because of those little flat spots, but that's pretty good, you know, pretty good amount of electrode stick out. Still doable though. And then that gives me that practice getting my, you know, one of the things that I'm doing when I do this is I'm getting my head in the practice of seeing the tungsten and seeing the gas cup, getting my head back there. Okay. Doesn't mean sometimes we don't weld like that, but I try to avoid it. Okay. So, so that's a pretty good, pretty good chance if you were just to grab some random ballpoint pens 
you can find a piece to put in there that is fill an eighth inch collet. All right. Again, that doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. You can still do it with just a TIG rig and a dry run. You know, I, I tell my students uh, that that dry run we talk about as being very important. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to put them pins back together. We're just going to keep those ready for, for big welding practice one day. But anyway, I tell them that, that they can build that manual dexterity, be it with TIG or with MIG or with, uh, I'm sorry, GMAW. Well, I don't want the t t terminology police to come get me. Bad teacher, bad CWI. But anyway... You can build some manual manual muscle control just holding that torch in your hand. I can do the same thing. Just holding this MIG gun in my hand, okay? I've got four or five uh, MIG guns that are non-functional that I wish I could get to students right now that wanted to, to play with them some. But I could practice doing this all day, getting from point A to point B as smooth as possible. Maybe even just take that wire and barely touch it. Watch my travel angle, watch my work angle, and I can build some skill having never welded before. Okay, I could practice welding around my old water bottle with my, my, my work angle and travel angle just like this. Okay, even though it's not steady, I'm not welding, it's building some muscle memory. Okay, I could practice holding the gun like this if I wanted to. Okay, I could practice using my left hand, especially for you guys that are already. Oh, I'm a good welder. I don't need to practice with no pen. Start putting some stuff in the other hand. Okay, sit down on the floor and do it. But don't, don't, don't cop out on any welding training because you can't go there right now. There's things that you can do. Obviously, our lack of resources, electrode holders, MIG guns, TIG torches are the problem. So a couple things that I thought about doing is making resin replicas, plastic replicas of TIG torches. Uh, there's a, a casting process with materials you can buy at Hobby Lobby that will allow you to make a very detailed mold around your torch okay, and then pour plastic resin and it will pretty much duplicate that object and it does enough precision and the plastic is rigid enough it will accept threads so you can put your collet, uh, your, uh, <coughs> your gas box, your, your gas lens or your collet body on there and Cast it just like that, with a, maybe with a back cap on there already. And then just drill the front of the plastic to the size of whatever you want to put in there. You could put a Sharpie in there, doesn't matter. And then, of course, you could screw your, your gas cup on there and practice with the specific gas cup size that you want to. So there's a lot of options out there. Same thing with a MIG gun. You know, I've got a couple of MIG guns. Like I said, they were uh, from American Torch Tip. They're little short demo models. They'd be nice if I could get those to students that were interested. But something where we can get that actual true feel is better with a TIG torch. I think the plastic replicas will work good. With GMAW and SMAW, I think having some good low-cost uh, electrode holders purchased from a, purchased from somebody for a decent cost would give us some opportunities to, to do a little bit better while we're in this situation. Uh, when I actually do my classes while I'm lecturing, I try to encourage students to take those practice MIG guns and TIG torches and stingers and actually practice doing things with them without ever striking an arc. So I've come out here to this specific table right here that's a mess and had 22 students go through and make a two inch aluminum TIG weld about that long and we all used one piece of tungsten, okay? But they had, some of them had practiced this. Whenever they get here to the table, I make them do dry runs without using a torch and they all made it without, you know, and it's because we've been using these pencils for years, okay? Uh, that handwriting right there, I know you can't see it from that angle, it looks pretty bad. Well, my real handwriting looks about that bad. Not too bad. Ah, it's a little bit neater, a little bit more control. But anyway, so there's some options for practicing at home. Anything that you can do to build the manual dexterity, you know, I've seen the cheese whiz and the different stuff. All those things are good, don't get me wrong. But getting that actual TIG torch, MIG gun, stick electrode holder in your hands, I think is going to be a big plus, Okay. Y'all have a good good day. I hope this video's halfway decent. I know this is kind of funky, but y'all have a good day. I'm not a big video maker. I ain't really all that good of a welder, much less a video maker. If you're a welding instructor and you'd like to network with some other instructors, check out weldinginstructors.org. Also, feel free to give me an email, gerald at weldinginstructors.org, if we can help each other out. Have a great day.